In this floor framing seminar, I'm going to go through the process of creating a floor framing plan. I'm going to begin by placing the beams that you see in the 3D view. Then I'm going to move on to create the framing direction and the joist spacing for the deck. I'm going to take advantage of using the automatic framing to create our floor framing in here. And then I'm going to replace some of those framing members with trusses. And I'm going to show you how to place some of the structural hardware. As I zoom in here, you can take a look. Some of the structural hardware that I placed in this plan, both in a 2D view and a 3D view. If you take a look at the 2D version of this, many times when you're doing your structural diagrams, the text on your plans is difficult to read and by combining that with a 3D view may help in understanding the way that these components for the ties and hold downs work. Let me go into the program and let's get started with our framing. I've opened up a version of this plan without any framing. Let's begin by taking a 3D perspective floor overview. For this particular design, I want to cantilever the deck and I also want to use a floor trussing system. This is going to require a set of beams that will come out. For the seminar, I'm going to go through and I'm going to frame the third floor. Floor framing in Chief Architect is framed on the second floor for the floor above. Let's step down to the second floor. The second floor is where the framing is actually built for the floor above. I'm going to begin by changing my layer set from the camera view to a 3D framing set. I'm going to leave this view up periodically. We'll return to it from our 2D view. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the beams in this floor that will support and cantilever the deck. Let's go back over into the plan view and let's start this process. In the plan view on the third floor, the deck area represents the gray highlight that I've clicked on. This will be framed on the floor below, as will the main floor. As you go down to the second floor where this framing will occur, you'll notice you cannot see the deck outline. You'll find a tool over in your side toolbar for reference display floors. If I toggle this on, I have a reference display set to just turn on the deck walls from the floor above. You can identify your reference display layer by clicking on the floor indicator. This will open up and allow you to choose which reference display layer is being used. In this case, I'm using one that I created specifically to show the deck walls. If I were to open this up, the only thing that I have selected are the deck walls that I put on a specific layer. I identified the color and the line style. You can turn this display off by also pressing F9 on the keyboard. Let me begin the process by drawing a floor beam in the main area for the larger portion of the deck. Using the tool for the floor and ceiling beam, I'm just going to come over here, snap on the outside wall of this deck, and I'm going to bring it down right into this area. I'm going to go ahead and select it, open it up, and make some changes. I'm going to make sure that I lock the top of this beam before I make any dimensional changes. And for the beam depth itself, I'm going to set it to be 16 and a half. And for the width, it's a pretty wide beam at 10 and 5 16 For the type of material that we're going to use, it will be a still eye. And then one of the things that I like to do on the fill style for structural components is to come in here on the fill style and choose a color. I like to use something that stands out. I'm going to use a bright red and then I'm actually going to put a transparency so any of the components you see below there, you'll be able to see it. And finally on the label com component, I'm going to go ahead and put in the actual beam. In this case, it is a W16 by 77. Once I've completed those edits, I'm going to go ahead and slide that over where I need it to be. And then I'm going to use the copy and reflect about so I can place another one of those beams right on the other side of the area. The next beam I need to draw is going to be a girder truss that so will go in here. Let's again use our beam tool. We'll come across here and create this last beam. Now for this beam, this is going to be a glue lamb. I'm going to set it to be 22 inches in depth. And I also want the bottom height to be at the floor height, 241 and 3 8 and notice as I type that in, it's important to lock the depth, otherwise it will change around. On the width of this beam, I'm going to go ahead and set it to be three and a half. And it is a glue lamb beam. And again, on the fill style, I'm going to change that to be the same color that we used before. And again, set it to be a 75% transparency. And on the label, if you want to come in here and type in the glue lamb information, and then in this case, I'm going to have another beam over here that it will connect into. I'm going to go ahead and pull that over. And then back in the 3D view, you can see where we have added those two beams. And then the glue lamb, one of the things that I like to do on my materials for girder trusses or other structural components, you'll notice some of my posts in here have the darker color, is a color coding that makes it very easy to visually identify them in 3D. 
I'm going to skip ahead and add the remaining I-beams into the floor platform. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the rim joists that will go around the outside of the cantilever, return back into our floor plan view. The structural engineer has called for a C-channel that will go around the outside. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to simply trace around the outside of the deck with the line tool and then I'm going to convert this into a molding and assign that molding into the C-channel. Once I've completed tracing the outside of the deck, I'm going to use a tool in my lower edit menu, Convert to Polyline. I'm going to choose to convert it to a molding polyline. And in here, I'm going to set the height of this molding to be at the floor height, 241 and 3 8 Then for the molding itself, I'm going to choose a C-channel. You'll find that C-channel in your core library underneath your architectural moldings and brackets and C-channel. I'm going to choose that C channel and I'm going to set the height and width at 18 by 4. Go back into the 3D view and then I'm going to use the material eyedropper, pick up the material off of the I-beam, apply it onto the C channel and then as we rotate around you can see that we now have the outside rim joist formed for our cantilever deck. Let's take a look at what we want to accomplish with this cantilever. If you take a look at the diagram that I have, on the far right hand side I have it set up for the interior of the house to have a 22 inch truss as you can see here and then the subfloor will be on top of that. As you step outside into the cantilever of the deck, the beams that we drew will be down in the lower portion a few of those beams are different sizes depending on what which beam it is. There will be a nailer then that will be a little bit of a variable shape. In this diagram I have it at 1 and 5 8 On top of the nailer will be a sheet of plywood and then on top of that will be sloping lightweight concrete. It will begin at 4 inches and have a slight slope away from it. Let me show you the settings inside of the two different rooms on how I set this up and then we'll go through the process of building the framing. From the third floor, let's explore the framing platform inside of the house. I'm going to choose one of the rooms. Let's go ahead and open it up and let's look at the structure component for this platform. Down here in the bottom for the floor structure, I have two layers set up. The top layer is the sheet of plywood. The second layer will be for the floor truss itself. Let's go ahead and open up our deck room and take a look at the settings inside of the deck room for the floor structure. Again, down here on the floor structure, the thickness is still the same depth, but you're going to notice several layers. The lightweight concrete, plywood, the nailer. In this case, we're going to have a treated joist in here. And then the remainder of that is going to be the beam. All of these layers that I have in here then correspond over in this area and match up. When we do the framing, it will then come out as I would expect. Now the framing for this third floor is actually built from the second floor. Let's go ahead and go down to the second floor. Under the build menu, let's go into our framing. Let's build our framing for this floor. You'll find it on the second floor. Come down and notice this section right here. Build the subfloor on floor 3. Let's go ahead and choose the option to build the framing. Let's go into the 3D view and take a look. Now in the 3D view you can see the joists have built. We have our 22 inch joist in there. The lower joists out on the deck. Now let's go through and clean up the deck. Add the ledger board that we need to make sure we have in here. And then also I'm going to replace some of the joists with floor trusses. Framing for the main portion of the house is set up to be 24 inches on center. For the deck, this area over here needs to be 16 inches on center. This portion that's cantilevered out larger needs to be 12 inches on center. And the portion on the far side needs to be 16 inches on center but perpendicular to this wall. As well, inside the master bathroom, there's a cantilever that shows up out here. This framing needs to go perpendicular, and we'll use this as a girder beam, and also put in a girder truss right in this area. Let me show you how to use a bearing line and joist direction, and control the on-center spacing for those areas. From the build menu, underneath framing, you'll find a joist direction tool. I'm going to go ahead and choose this tool, and I'm going to come out in the deck area, and I'm going to simply click and drag like I would do a line. As I complete that line, let's go ahead and open it up. From the default spacing of our main floor, I'm going to change this to be 16 inches on center. While that line is still selected, I'm going to create a couple of copies of it. Let's go ahead and create a copy of it here, off to the side over here, and then one more copy off to the side on this area. On this side over here, let's rotate this around for the joist direction. 
zoom in a little bit. I'm going to shrink it up so that it's contained inside that space. Again, it's already set up to be 16 inches on center. This one's 16 inches on center. And this area over here, I'm going to set this to be 12 inches on center. So make a change in here. Now since this deck is one contiguous area, I actually need to use underneath the framing component a tool called a bearing line. And I'm just going to come over here off to the side of this wall over here, come down and drag a line into this area. While the tool is still active, I'll come over and do the exact same thing over into this area. This will create a segment and when we update our framing, let's go back in and update our floor framing. And when we regenerate this for the subfloor on floor three, notice what happens. All of the framing updated except over in this area, I actually need to create another bearing line back into the build framing menu. Let's go back in and add that bearing line. And I'm just going to come over here right off the end of this wall and we'll just draw one right across in this area. Let's also slide over into the master area. While the tool is still active, I'm going to come over here, draw a line that will come into this area as well as down here from this intersection down we're going to create a bearing line and then we'll use the tool let's go ahead and just grab a copy of this joist tool paste it over here in this area down here and then inside of that let's go back in and reset it to our default spacing of 24 on center and then we'll create another copy of it paste it over here and then I'll rotate that to be perpendicular since we want that framing to change and we'll paste one more copy up in this area to make sure that the framing does not change. Let's zoom out and let's go ahead and rebuild our framing and take a look. So back into the build framing dialog and for that subfloor 3 let's regenerate it. Over in the master area notice that the framing members have changed to be perpendicular over off to the side on the deck area. Those have been changed to be perpendicular as well. And for the most part, we have the framing completed in those areas. However, we probably need to zoom in here and take a look and make sure we have all the ledgers on the deck. And then I'll explore doing some trusses into the main area. Now as you take a look at this in 3D, sometimes in your framing editing I find the vector view is a little bit easier to come in here and sometimes you press the tab key and you can remove the extra framing members that you need. Notice that we need to put a ledger board in there, that'll be easier to do in 2D. We rotate around, here's another area that we can remove that rim board off both edges in here press the tab key to get to it. Sometimes they're difficult to get to in this view and we'll do a little bit of cleanup We'll also put a ledger board on this area right here. So let's do that from our 2D view. In this view, I'm going to go ahead and select the outer ledger in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and use the point to point move. Zoom in a little bit. I'm going to pull this inside of that C channel. Click on this area and I'm going to click right in this area. Now I'll go ahead and zoom out and I'm going to use the trim tool to trim off the extra ends off those joists. While the joist is selected, I'm going to use the trim tool, come through here and we'll just trim off the edges of those elements. To create a copy of that ledger, I'm going to use the copy tool. I'm going to hold my control key down and I'm going to slide it very near the edge of the house. I'll go ahead and zoom out and pull this down. I'm going to snap it right to the edge of the house. And again, if I hold down the control key, it will override the bumping and I'll snug it right up against that area. I'll go ahead and slide over to this area where we needed another ledger board against the house. I'll grab the inside board, create a copy of it. And in this case, let's use a point to point move that it maybe save us a step. We'll come over here, snap onto this corner over here and we'll just pull that right onto the inside of the wall. And then in the 3D view, I'm sure there's more cleanup that could be done in that area. But this gives me a pretty good start on the deck framing that I needed to be in 16 inches on center in this area, 12 inches on center in the larger area. And now for these components in here, this floor is eventually going to be fully trussed. If you don't necessarily need to go through the entire process of creating a truss, maybe you want to create a section or a 3D view of the trusses, only spend the amount of time that you need to do. In this case, stick framing it with the joist is a very fast process. Let me show you how you would truss this section right here in the center. From the plan view, I'm going to choose my floor joist tool and I'm going to draw a marquee around these elements. I have a shortcut to change the way my selection work and your preference you can change this setting down here under your edit component to be intersected with objects. A lot of times I change it between contained in and intersected in. 
I ended up actually adding that tool over here off to the side on my toolbar because that's something I use all the time. Using the floor joist tool, let's go ahead and draw a marquee around this area. That way we can delete all of those floor trusses or floor joists in that area. In your build framing menu, you'll find a tool for a floor and ceiling truss. When you select this tool, you can come in and just simply click and drag to place that truss. Once it's placed, my temporary dimensions are on. Let's go ahead and zoom in here and I'm going to set this one to be one foot eight and a half. That will allow me to do spacing at two foot centers. Let's go ahead and use our multiple copy. Verify that our interval for trusses is set to be 24 inches here. And now when I use my multiple copy tool and drag this across, it will create those trusses every 24 inches. Let's go back into the 3D view and you can see the floor trusses in this section in here. Switch our camera back to our standard camera and now you can see the way those trusses come in. Let me open up the completed view, show you a few more things about this. As I open up the completed plan, you can see that I've placed the remaining floor trusses in here simply by deleting the joists in there, drawing the trusses. For the girder trusses, you can see in this case, I've color coded it using a darker material. It makes it very easy to pick up anything that's structural in that area. And the last thing I'm going to show in the video is the process of putting any of your structural components. I've got some hold downs in here, some strapping components in here that go up into the trusses and across the walls. Let me show you the process that I've used to create that here at the end of the video. For your structural drawings, you can add text. In this case, the structural engineer is called out for a couple of hold downs in this area over here and a strap. I've downloaded the Simpson bonus catalog. A particular hold down I've done a search for, you'll find the 2D representation. And in some cases, you can also find the 3D. I'm going to grab this hold down component, come over here. Let's click and place it. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so I can position it. Let's go ahead and slide it up against this wall. A lot of times you may need to change the draw order so that it doesn't disappear behind the wall hatching. Down here in the draw order, I'm going to go ahead and just bring that most forward. And then let's go ahead and create a copy of this and we'll slide it around to the other wall. And then I'll just rotate it into place. And then the other thing that I've done in this case, I was looking for the strapping. I didn't find the 3D view of it in the library and I created a polyline solid, put a few holes in it and created my own strap. So let's go ahead and find our horizontal strap. I'll come over here, click and place that object. And then I'm going to go also click and place the vertical one and then we can position that into place. For the vertical one, I'm just going to slide that around, rotate it and snap it right against the studs and to do the same thing for the horizontal object. We'll come over here and then we'll go back into the 3D view and then position these exactly. So I'm going to click on the lower strap. I'm going to slide that up just a little bit so that it's right on the stud. Click on the lower strap and I'll just slide this right up in here. It calls for strapping right over the floor trusses. I've done this on the lower floor where I don't yet have the trusses, but you can get the idea. If you want to show this exactly in 3D as well as in your 2D view, you can then show that information in these views. Now if you take a look at my completed version, I have the floor framing with some text callouts in here. I also created a specific one for the shear walls that removes the framing and has that callout information in here. And I controlled that through a different layer set. Well, that concludes the video seminar on the floor framing for the Lake Point sample plan. I began the process by drawing out the floor I-beams. I then created a C-channel with a molding polyline using the line tool, converting that. We took a look at how to create the automatic framing. In particular for the decks, I used a bearing line and joist direction to control the spacing. I used the floor trusses to draw the floor trusses in the midsection. And then I concluded the video by showing just briefly a little bit about the 2D and structural components that you can lay out in 3D.